Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel if it's the first time you are visiting. So today we're going to be talking all about fragrances that I personally feel are underrated and it could be for a number of different reasons and I'll explain why when I talk about each fragrance but if you want to hear more about the fragrances that I feel are underrated and deserve more love then please do keep on watching. Now the first fragrance that I want to discuss with you is by the brand Memoirs of a Perfume Collector and this one is called Meet Meet Where the Sky Touches the Sea and it's inspired by Cote de Jour. So if I refer to it as Cote de Jour, that's just how I remember the fragrance because the name's a little bit shorter. Let me give you a close up of the bottle. Now, Memoirs of a Perfume Collector as a whole is a really incredible niche brand with high quality fragrances. But today we're talking about Meet Me Where the Sky Touches the Sea, as I feel like so many of you will love this fragrance. It's a beautiful kind of aquatic, marine, salty scent that is perfect for spring and summer, but it also has this really kind of nice woodiness to it as well. It just makes me feel a very certain type of way. This makes me think of, you know, Riviera, being by the harbor, maybe being on a boat in the lake, or maybe you're in the ocean. It's got a really nice salty quality to it but also you get this almost freshness. It feels like fresh air. There's kind of dense trees around. So you're getting a little bit of woodiness, but you're also getting a fresh kind of greenness too. And it smells like the sun has hit your skin and there's this kind of glistening, salty vibe going on. I know I'm giving you the weirdest description right now, but it's just how this makes me feel. And I think that is most important about a fragrance rather than the individual notes per se. Now, I wanna compare it to a fragrance, which I don't like to do. However, I think it might give you an idea of how this smells to me. Now, this is very different, let me just say that. But if you do like the fragrance Wood Sage and Sea Salt by Jo Malone, but you hate the longevity as I do, it is literally gone from the skin within an hour, then I would highly recommend checking out Meet Me Where the Sky Touches the Sea because it's in a similar kind of family. Wood Sage and Sea Salt, I've described this as being, you know, a little bit woody, a little bit salty. But this one, in my opinion, is like 100 times better. The quality of the ingredients, the longevity, you know, the creativity behind the brand as well. I can't speak of this one highly enough. So if you're looking for a beautiful spring summer fragrance and you like a saltiness to your scents, then I would highly recommend checking this one out because I think it is truly underrated. The next fragrance that I feel is underrated is by Mesa Margiela and it's from the Replica line and this one is Matcha Meditation. Now this is a very popular brand and a very hyped up brand. However, Matcha Meditation is one that I never see people speak about, but it is one of my favorites from the collection. Now, I can understand why it's not popular because not a lot of people like the note of matcha, but if you are someone who likes a matcha note, then I think you should get your nose on this one because when you combine that beautiful green powdery kind of earthiness of the matcha with the white chocolate note that's in here, it just leaves for a very delicious smell. You're absolutely going to smell unique wearing this one. And whenever I smell it on somebody else, I'm just absolutely intoxicated by it. I don't know what it is. It just smells like a really gorgeous, maybe matcha white hot chocolate or a matcha cake. And yeah, I just think it's very underrated. It reminds me of Tokyo, which is actually the province and period that it's inspired by. Well, Tokyo 2008. And I completely get where they got the inspiration from. I won't hype it up too much, but I feel like this is an underrated gem from the Replica line, but you absolutely have to enjoy a note of matcha to enjoy this one. Sorry if you can hear the clanking. I realize I keep doing this with my nail against the bottle. So yeah, that was my second underrated gem. The next fragrance that I wanna share with you is by Soma, and this one is Halcyon. And this one is so, so delicious. Let me give you a close up of the bottle. It's relatively new to my collection still. I did include it in another video maybe a month ago. It was in, I think, my new fragrance obsessions. And Halcyon, Halcyon, Halcyon. Wow, 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 where have you been all my life? This is a beautiful, 
boozy gourmand fragrance. It's got lots of delicious notes in here and I am swooning over it to be quite honest with you. It's got notes of toffee, it's got honey, it's got cinnamon, it's got rum, tobacco, tonka bean, orchid. Need I say more? Those notes alone probably give you a picture of what this is gonna smell like. And it is definitely a boozy fragrance. You absolutely get that rum note, but then you're getting all of those gourmand notes come into it to make it really oozy, boozy, and delicious. That toffee, that honey, tonka bean, vanilla, a little bit of cinnamon. Oh, this is one you absolutely have to experience. So this is a niche brand that in my opinion is at a great price point for the quality of ingredients used. And it's another fragrance that I'm gonna liken it to something else just to give you an idea of how it smells. Cause I know with these more independent niche brands, it's harder to sample them in retailers. So that's the only reason why I am giving you a comparison point just to give you a view of what I think it smells a little bit similar to. Now, if you like Angel Share, and I am a big lover of Angel Share. Halcyon is in a similar family. However, I feel like this one is less cloying and the notes within Halcyon get a lot more individual love because it's not an overly cloying and sweet fragrance. So you get to experience all of those different notes without it being overpowered by one dominant sweet note. Whereas I feel like Angel Share, just my personal view, is extremely sweet and can be very cloying and you don't necessarily get to experience all of the other notes within that fragrance. Don't get me wrong, I love Angel Share. Whereas Halcyon, you do really get to go on a bit of a journey with the different notes that's within this composition. So if Angel Share is maybe a tad too sweet for you, then you might just prefer Halcyon, or if you like Angel Share, then you're probably definitely gonna like Halcyon too. Sorry, I'm going off on a bit of a tangent here, but yeah, this is a great one that I feel like so many people need to experience. I need to test more from this house, but so far, so good, and this is definitely an underrated gem. The next fragrance is from Soradora, and this one is called Vanyatu. I hope I'm pronouncing that one correctly. And I feel like Soradora is pretty hyped at the moment. I myself definitely hype up the brand. As you probably know already, I absolutely love Mandole. I absolutely love Orchidée Rouge. I love Brasiliande. So I wanted to talk about another fragrance from the house that is truly underrated and it's newer to my collection, which is why I haven't spoken about it yet, but wow, this one actually blew me away. And if you love a note of fig, then I would highly recommend you check this one out because it's definitely very different from Mandole, from Orchidée Rouge, from Brasiliande. It's definitely more unisex too. You get lots of that fig note, you get black pepper, you get violet. There's a little bit of papyrus. You get some sandalwood. But you know what note stands out to me the most is the cumin note. That is really prominent within this composition. And I do love a fragrance that utilizes the note of cumin. It also has cardamom, which is another note I love, and a little bit of rhubarb. But yeah, if I could sum this up, it's a little bit more earthy. It's got like a greenness to it, which I guess comes from the fig, the papyrus, and then that cumin and cardamom gives us a beautiful kind of dry spiciness. It's not super sweet, but there's a tad bit of sweetness going on through this composition. And it's definitely a more unisex fragrance. So if you like those kind of fig and sandalwood fragrances, think of like Grease Chanel, think of Fig Infusion by Essential Parfums, then it's highly likely that you're probably gonna love Vanyatu. I would highly recommend getting a sample of this one. Soradora actually does discovery kits. And to be fair, there's not been a fragrance from Soradora that I haven't liked. So I wanted to share with you an underrated gem from the brand. And if you do want a more detailed review of this one, please do let me know. But I just love a fig and sandalwood fragrance. Add the cumin, add the um, cardamom, then you're onto a winner in my books anyway. Next up, we have an underrated gem from Parfums de Mali, and this one is Cassili. Now, I know Parfums de Mali is a very hyped up 
brand. However, the reason why I wanted to put Cassilli in this video, sorry, it was taking a while to refocus back in on me. So the reason I wanted to feature Cassilli in this video is because I think this is such a fantastic fragrance from Perfumes de Mali, and it is not talked about enough. I know there's a couple of people that talk about it and love it, but when I think about all the hype around certain Perfumes de Mali fragrances, such as the Delina Trio, of course, and then something like Oriana, even the new Valia fragrance, I feel like Cassilli doesn't get the love that it deserves. And this to me is the most beautiful kind of balmy solar floral, but it has a sweetness to it. It has a vanillic touch. You've got a really prominent note of frangipani and mimosa. So you get those nice, gorgeous solar balmy yellow florals. You have a little bit of patalia in here too, and then some sweet notes up top. The sweet notes are really coming from the red currant, which is within the top notes. And also it has a note of plum, which I absolutely get. And then you've got lots of vanilla, tonka bean and sandalwood in the base. But how I perceive this one is to be almost a little bit more beachy and tropical, but it's not going in that suntan lotion kind of vibe. It's definitely a lot more grown up and chic, but I do see it as more of a spring summer scent. I love the note of frangipani. Combine that with the red currant, the plum, the tonka bean and vanilla. I think she's absolutely gorgeous and I wish she got more love. Sorry, I'm calling it her. I know that's a bit weird to some people, but Cassilli is absolutely gorgeous. So please do let me know down in the comments if you've tried Cassilli and if you love it. And maybe if you don't love it, please do share why. But me personally, I think this is an underrated gem from the house. The next underrated gem is from Alexandra J, and this one is Imperial Peacock. And I think Alexandra J as a whole is very underrated. Firstly though, how gorgeous is this Art Deco glass bottle? I think it's an absolute work of art. And I feel like every fragrance within the Art Nouveau collection, which comes in these beautiful glass bottles, is really underrated. I don't see them talked about too much. I featured Imperial Peacock way back when I started my YouTube channel in July or August. I say way back like that was ages ago, it wasn't. And I've only ever seen one, maybe two other people talk about the brand. I know Sharida has um, Oriental Enigma. She might have Imperial Peacock now too. I can't remember. But I feel like this one deserves so much love. It is an expensive fragrance, but you can get some deals out there. So please do keep an eye on it. Sorry, my nails. I'm giving you some like ASMR right here. I will stop that. But this is the most gorgeous gourmand fragrance. It has me rolling my eyes into the back of my head. I sometimes find it too gourmand, so I haven't worn it that much. Is that a thing, too gourmand? Maybe for me, because I suffer with migraines. But yeah, rhubarb, almond, tonka bean, chef's kiss, lots of vanilla too. It's very sweet and on the skin, it kind of becomes at one with you and just projects into smelling like the most gorgeous gourmand, decadent pastry ever. There's a little bit of cinnamon and a little bit of woodiness. So that almost gives it that grounding that it needs to balance out the sweet notes. And then it does have a note of heliotrope, which almost gives it a musky powdery vibe too. But the notes that are really prominent to my nose is the rhubarb, the tonka bean, and the almond note. Super delicious. If you can get a sample of this one, I would highly recommend doing so. And I really do need to pick up Oriental Enigma because it's the second favorite of mine from the line. And that one is equally just as gorgeous. Last but not least, we have Eight and Bob Anique number five. And this one is is so so delicious I know I haven't used much of it and some people do comment about the dents in my bottles quite often and they ask if I overspray underspray what the tea is about my dents now just a bit of a disclaimer I have a lot of perfumes in my collection I have hundreds of bottles so it's very difficult for me to make dents within my fragrances but not only that I'm a very light sprayer 
two to four sprays max. I suffer with migraines. I can't wear too much perfume, unfortunately. I would love to spray more, but I know it's gonna bring on a headache. And it's kind of the fight that I have to have with myself all the time because of course I'm a perfume collector. I want to wear perfumes. I want to be trying them all the time, but I've also got to think about my health and my headaches. So it's a very frustrating battle for me. Now, unfortunately, it's just something I have to deal with. Sorry, I've gone off on this tangent, but not only the bottles I have in my collection, I also have a lot of samples that I try. So it's very hard for me to make a dent. And when I do make a dent, it's because I've been using something religiously now, everything that I have in my collection are love. So if I'm gonna talk about it and it's in my collection, I love it. Sometimes I will tell you if I dislike something and I will declutter it out of my collection, but let's get on to Anique number five because it is an incredible fragrance. I should have reached for this a lot more in autumn and winter, but I didn't and it is what it is. But one of you might absolutely love it, so I'm gonna share it in here as an underrated gem. Now, this is another boozy fragrance another gourmand boozy fragrance, and it has a note of rum in there. You've also got honey, you've got plum, you've got amber, and you've got caramel. Oh, it's so good. I don't know why I didn't reach for it more. I need to make a habit of making sure I don't wear fragrances more than one day in a row, so I give equal use to all of my fragrances within my collection. But I'm gonna give you a bit of a story around this. I was in Harvey Nichols in Bristol, I asked the sales associate what her favorite fragrance was within the fragrance hall. And this is the one that she showed me. And instantly I knew I had to have it. It was such a great recommendation. And it's a question that I often ask the sales associates. I always wanna know what their favorite is because they have a lot of experience within the brands that they work in day in and day out. So I think it's a very good thing to ask. But yeah, Anika number five is a beautiful boozy gourmand. It has major sillage. And it's a pretty good price point. I will link it down below. Yeah, it's one that I think is a truly underrated gem and I think more people should try it. I've just noticed I always flick between saying perfume and fragrance. I hope that doesn't annoy anyone, but I sometimes say perfume and I sometimes say fragrance, just one of those things. But yeah, this is the last fragrance I wanna talk about and it's a true gem from Aiden Bob. I hope you enjoyed my list. Please do let me know your thoughts down in the comments. Are there any in my list that you really love? maybe one that you wanna try, maybe you don't like them, I'd still love to know down in the comments. But what I most wanna know and what I always wanna know is what are your underrated gems? Because I will go out of my way to research them. I always find such amazing recommendations from you all. So please do let me know down in the comments what fragrances you feel are truly underrated. Thank you so much for watching me today. It's been a pleasure as always. I hope to see you all in a video to come. Thank you so much and goodbye.